Okay, good afternoon, everybody. It's my pleasure to introduce to you Jun Hong Wei from Penn State University. He was a graduate student up to last week, and he graduated. And he's going to go ahead and have a postdoc in Germany starting June 13th. So he's taking this month in between to spend time at NCAR. His office is at the Mesa Lab, but he's happy to come down here anytime if you want to have a conversation with him. And Jun Hong is here to talk to us about parametrizations uh, frontal gravity waves, which is always something we struggle in Wacom. So he's been using mesoscale model to hopefully help us constrain the gravity waves in the Wacom model. So I'll hand it over to you. Thank you very much. Can you hear me clearly? So uh, first I want to uh, thank Yaga for hosting uh, my visit. It's a short-term visit, just one month, but uh, I really want to uh, work with her and, and, uh, and in, uh, in for a longer uh, run and uh, uh, thank you for uh, thank her uh, for introducing all the experts uh, uh, this in these two two days my talk is on toward improving parameterization of Jeffron gravity wave associate with idealized moist barcanin waves so this is my resume I hope you can remember it remember me <laughs> and uh, just like uh, Yaga said I just got my uh, degree uh, last weekend and this is Fu Ching, my advisor. I work with him in Penn, uh, Penn State. And I will be here for a month. And after that, I will be in Germany. So I'm very glad that I can include these two items uh, into my, uh, in, in my uh, resume. And this is, <laughs> so it, I'm very excited uh, about, uh, you know, everything's going to happen. So uh, in my introduction, so as you may know, gravity wave is very important in atmospheric dynamic. It can be generated by topography, jet imbalance, frontogenesis, and convection. And it can uh, transfer momentum and energy from its source uh, level up to the middle atmosphere. When gravity breaks, it, it can induce clear air turbulence, and it's very dangerous uh, to the uh, high-flying aircraft. To the tropospheric weather, it can initiate and modulate convection. The gravity wave that I'm focused on is the massive scale gravity wave associated with the Jeffram system. In this plot, it's often called the UK87 conceptual model, where Mussolini and Koch uh, summarized the synoptic uh, environment for the generation and the maintenance of the massive scale gravity wave in the mid latitude system. And this result is based on the 13 observational cases uh, focusing on the uh, gravity wave below the upper level trough. It is found the gravity wave is often found in the jet X region, the cold side of the surface warm from. The wave characteristic is as follows. Horizontal wavelength is within the 15 to 500 kilometer, and vertical wavelength is about 1 to 4 kilometer. And phase velocity is about 15 to 35 meters per second. And they raised the hypothesis that the generation mechanism should be the geostrophic adjustment. Later, JAM 2004 used a high-resolution mesoscale model and successfully generated the jet oxygen gravity wave during the life cycle of the dry idealized uh, barcanine wave. Here, the uh, shaded color is the upper level jet, and the red contour is the uh, divergence and convergence. Essentially, show you the uh, signal of the gravity wave. There is a uh, uh, John wave here located in the JX region. The horizontal wavelength is about uh, 150 kilometer. Within the mesoscale range, vertical wavelength is about 2.5 kilometer, and the intrinsic frequency about four times core hours parameter. In John 2004 paper, he hypothesized the generation mechanism should be spontaneous balance adjustment. Later, in Ling and Zhang 2008, they used uh, two-dimensional Fourier decomposition and identified four uh, separate wave package, one, two, three, four, located in this uh, region. And they used uh, four-dimensional ray chasing techniques to investigate the propagating characteristic and the source mechanism of these four identified wave package. For example, there are actually two separate wave packages in the JX region. The first wave package, WP1, is a sharp scale wave package with 150 kilometer, and its potential source should be the uh, upper level jet or the surface front. The second wave package is a medium scale wave package with horizontal wavelength about 350 kilometer, and the potential uh, source should be the upper level jet. 
Uh, there's a fifth way package in the John 2004 simulation, but it's not uh, highly documented in, in his paper. However, it is mentioned in the Pruegemann and Snyder. Uh, this fifth way package located between the upper level ridge and the upper level uh, trough. And in a cross section, it's just a little bit above uh, uh, the trough of uh, region. And here shows you the wave characteristic of this wave package. In another study by Pruegemann and Snyder, they demonstrate uh, that the propagation of the, this inertial gravity wave through the horizontal deformation and vertical shear strongly influences the spatial orient organization of the waves and imposes the three-dimensional orientation of their wave vector. So essentially, they argue that the wave characteristic and its orientation is determined or predicted by the uh, wave cap capture theory, which is mainly focused on the background wind effect. I want to include a, a, a motivation on the gravity wave parameterization, even though I'm not the expert on this uh, topic, but I will, and it is my current uh, research interest and, uh, and also future research interest. Uh, in Richard uh, et al. Uh, 2010, uh, uh, paper, they use a source-oriented parameterization and compare the orographic gravity wave, convective gravity wave drag, frontal gravity wave drag, and they found that the gravity wave drag from the frontal system, which is my focus interest here, is the largest contributor to the total gravity wave drag in the extratropic uh, region, and it is responsible for the cold summer massive pulse and the jet reversal at these altitudes. So all the idealized simulation in my uh, uh, introduction section is based on the dry uh, dynamics. And there was seldom paper used uh, uh, moist uh, environment to understand the gravity wave in the in idealized simulation. I want to take this into consideration. There are several reasons. Moist convection is closely linked with the mesoscale gravity wave in the jet from uh, 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 Barracuni wave and moist convection itself can be a very important source uh, of gravity wave. For the large scale flow, moist convection is an active and significant contributor to the development of the Barracuni wave and the flow imbalance. So I believe that uh, the role of moisture in Barracuni jet from system is and will be uh, an active uh, area of the gravity wave research. So I hope you are motivated in my introduction section. Right now I give you the, the, my uh, uh, introduction on the, my idealized moist jet from waves. This is model set, uh, set up. And this figure shows you the uh, jet profile of my initial condition. This axis represents the y-axis of my model domain. This is the two-dimensional jet. Here is the southern part of my domain, and this is the, here is the northern part of my domain. This axis shows you the uh, vertical direction. The black contour is the zonal velocity, and the yellow contour here is the potential temperature. And uh, this blue, blue, blue line is uh, the, the trop uh, pulse. And my horizontal uh, resolution is about 10 kilometer. Vertical resolution is about uh, 300 meters. And I, have, I also have dry simulation here in my simulation. I call it ESP00, where I don't have any uh, initial, condi uh, initial uh, relative humidity, zero relative humidity. And I also have a, a moist uh, control run, and I have a, in this moist uh, control run, is uh, the initial relative humidity is the shady color shown in this figure, and this shady color refers to Tan et al. Uh, paper. In addition, I have several experiments where I reduced the initial initial relative humidity. Uh, to 80%, 60%, 40%, and 20% to, to the reference uh, relative humidity, which is the uh, shaded color uh, again. So I call it uh, ESP 80, 60, 40, and, and 20. So in total, I have six runs, and they all have the, uh, the same initial jet, just different variables in the initial uh, relative humidity. Here in this plot, I give you the time series of the added kinetic energy for the large scale flow, balcony wave uh, scale flow, uh, in this plot, and also the gravity wave comp component for the EKE. So the picture shows, shows us if we have the same balcony uh, jet and we in, uh, increase the uh, initial moisture, we actually 
uh, expect to have a faster growth in the Barakini wave in terms of EKE, and at the same time also a faster growth of EKE for the gravity wave components. So uh, the, the interesting part is that if we look at the uh, time step uh, where the Barakini wave EKE are similar with each other, for example, the blue uh, triangle here is, uh, is the full moist run, have this uh, similar amplitude to the this black uh, triangle, which is the dry run. However, if we look at the same uh, time, uh, uh, same hour in the gravity component, the, uh, the full moist run has much larger amplitude than the, uh, uh, than the dry simulation in terms of its gravity wave uh, component, EKE. So how do we visualize this? I give you this plot to show you the two-dimensional distribution, and I compare the large-scale uh, barricade wave structure and the gravity wave signal, the short-scale gravity wave signal. Here, this is the, my dry simulation, ESP0, and weak moist simulation, ESP20, and median scale, uh, uh, median uh, moist uh, uh, in, uh, experiment up to the full moist experiment. And uh, one kilometer temperature is the uh, yellow contour, and black contour shows you the uh, eight kilo kilometer horizontal wind, essentially the upper level jet. And, and you can see that the, the large scale uh, structure of this barricade, the frontal system and, uh, and the, and the tropopause shade, shade here are very similar among this uh, experiment. However, I want to highlight the, the greatest difference lies in the, in the 12 kilo horizontal divergence, essentially the uh, blue contour and the red contour showing you the gravity wave signal. They are very different among each other. So you can see that uh, in the moist run it's much complicated than those in the dry simulation. So so simulation of moist balcony life cycle suggests a much more energetic gravity wave uh, field than in dry simulations. In the next three slides, I will compare the, the gravity wave component uh, slide by slide. Here is the dry simulation. You can see that the gravity wave signals are characterized by the dry, localized, identifiable gravity wave mode generated by dry source. And this is the weak moist run, ESP20. And I argue here the dry gravity wave mode continue to dominate because they have the relative similar wave ca characteristic. However, I need to acknowledge and highlight the, the <laughs> enhancement amplitude in the WP5 region and also the, the modification in the WP3 uh, region. In the median moist uh, run, you can see that in the ESP40, uh, I see both uh, shorter scale waves here in, in this region and also uh, me in the median scale wave. They are both very important in, in this simulation. In the ESP60, uh, there's more chances of uh, variation on the shorter scale gravity wave in the jet X region located in this region. In the strong uh, or full moist run, you can see that the sh shorter wave uh, signal really filling the entire balcony jet. There is still some imprint of the intermediate scale wave signal uh, roughly located in this uh, region. However, if you look at the full moist run, this uh, signal are very uh, complicated here, in, and it's almost gone. The intermediate scale uh, signal is almost gone. And in particular, it's very hard to determine just by eye about the dominant orientation uh, and of this wave front uh, uh, in, located in this region. So there is a di difference between the dry simulation and the weak moist simulation. Uh, I want to highlight uh, this difference, uh, which is the fifth wave package. Here is the dry simulation in the horizontal view, and this is the cross section along this uh, green uh, line. And here, it, these two plots are the corresponding plots uh, in the weak moist simulation. It turns out there are actually two separate uh, wave packages. The first wave package is, in, is for the southern part of the WP5 wave package. Its horizontal wavelength is about uh, 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 roughly f uh, 500 kilometer intrinsic frequency is about 1.3 uh, times Coriolis parameters. And there's also another uh, wave package, the northern part of the wave package is about uh, 60 to 90 kilometer and uh, intrinsic frequency about uh, four times Coriolis, Coriolis parameters. The location, about the location, the southern part of the uh, wave package is just, uh, a, just a little bit above the tropopause located within this region. The northern part of the wave package is at least two kilometer above the uh, two or three kilometer above the tropopause, 
And I argue here uh, the weight characteristic between uh, between the dry simulation and the uh, weak mass simulation are more or less the same, even though you can still see some modification, especially for the northern part of the weight, weight packet. How do we explain the modification and especially the enhancement? In order to explain it, I in need to introduce a six wave package. And this six wave package is uh, a connectively generated wave package, and it's never been introduced in any other uh, uh, dry simulation based on the Barakini wave. And this uh, wave package is, is seen just uh, almost immediately, several hours after the initial release of the latent heating. And here shows you the uh, gravity wave uh, response in the horizontal view in the weak moist run, ESP20 run. And this is the, uh, the cross-section view of this uh, WP6 uh, response. Here is the corresponding pl plot in the full moist run at very early uh, stage of the balcony wave. And you can see that the sixth wave package has roughly uh, six, uh, 50 to 60 kilometer horizontal wavelength. Its intrinsic frequency is about 10 times Coriolis core parameter. It's very high, the uh, Coriolis uh, intrinsic frequency, and it, I consider it as a relatively new wave package in terms of uh, dry idealized, uh, in terms of idealized uh, balcony wave uh, study. And in order to understand the evolution of this uh, WP6 uh, in the weak moist run, I show you the time evolution uh, every two hours. The shaded color here is the integrated positive only latent heating release, essentially show you where the convection, uh, convection uh, um, may be. At this hour, there's no latent heating release, and two hours later, there is a very small area of you know, color shady color here, and the, there's, you can almost no, cannot see any wave response uh, at this uh, time step. However, two hours later, as the color shading gets expanded, I see some uh, weak respon uh, response in the gravity wave field, and this response gets uh, much stronger two, two hours uh, later. And then you can see the six wave package uh, essentially so, show in this figure. So the convection not only can localize generate gravity wave, it can essentially gradually propagate from upstream localized uh, convection down to the uh, 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 entrance region. For example, I show you the, this figure here. If you check the uh, cross-section study uh, and check the gravity wave difference between dry simulation and the weak moist simulation, you can see the difference in this cross-section. However, there's no difference in this cross-section between uh, my dry simulation and the weak moist simulation. Eight hours later, there is difference. The difference can be seen in this uh, uh, cross-section. And the wave response is uh, seen roughly here, and it gets uh, strengthened. So the difference of the gravity waves uh, really travels uh, from upstream localized convection toward the downstream entrance uh, region. So I summarized uh, my uh, study of this uh, uh, article in the next uh, three uh, slides. For the dry simulation, I continue to support uh, the uh, Zhang Tudan force uh, argument using the uh, uh, spontaneous balance adjustment to, to uh, explain the generation uh, of the uh, Jeff-related uh, gravity weight. The developing barricade uh, instability results in increasing balance, imbalance, and gravity weight are continuously initiated downstream of the maximum imbalance. In the weak moist run, we still argue here that the dry dynamic still dominates. However, we acknowledge the, the, the enhancement here in the WP5 region. There are some, several reasons to explain this enhancement. One possibility is that this is, uh, the enhancement is, can be considered as a response to the uh, upstream localized uh, latent heating release. So there, is, there may be an interaction between the uh, uh, latent heating release and uh, uh, which is the moist dynamic and the, and the, and the gravity wave uh, signal here, which is dominated by the uh, by the dry dy dynamic. And uh, in the uh, full moist run, the picture gets very complicated. Uh, we observe that uh, the convective general gravity wave is seen at the very early stage uh, of the uh, Barakini life cycle, even before the jet gets you know, uh, curved and, 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 str and strengthened. And this convective gravity wave mode is soon coupled with other dry gravity wave mode and background uh, flow as Barakini uh, instability increase over, over time. So the coupling process uh, is much more uh, efficient compared to the uh, weak moist one. 
So this is a general uh, picture of my uh, conclusion, and we published this re result in this uh, uh, paper. And the next plot I try to calculate uh, the spectral characteristic is an, uh, an, an unpublished work where I, I try to you know calculate spectral characteristic in order to improve the general parameterization, gradual parameterization in the general circulation model using the high resolution measure scale model. <laughs> This is a very uh, in, uh, interesting data set. Here, I use the two-dimensional FFT uh, uh, based on the divergence uh, field. And uh, this is the wave number uh, space uh, uh, distribution. The x axis is the wave number k. And the y, uh, I only show you the positive component. And the y axis is the wave number l. I show you both positive and negative component. And you can see that. Here, the, this circle represents uh, 50 kilometer, and this circle represents 100 kilometer, and this circle represents 200 uh, kilometer. So I, I show you uh, most focus on the short scale, and you can see that the short scale weighs between 50 kilometer, and there is a strongly enhancement uh, uh, around 45 degree in weak, weak moist run compared to those in the dry simulation. And if we look at the full moist run, the distribution of this uh, in this wave number space in the energy appears to be relatively, relatively more uh, homogeneous along along uh, all, all direction, although you can st uh, still argue that there may be a slightly stronger signal uh, along this direction. But generally speaking, the energy is distributed re relatively homogeneous uh, in this short scale uh, range. Now, I, this is the same, uh, almost the same uh, plot, but I focus, I zoom in to look at the median scale wave, where here this uh, circle represents a 200 kilometer this is the 400 kilometer, and this is 600 kilometer. And uh, I focus uh, to look at the um, uh, energy distribution of the median scale wave in the wave number space. Again, the uh, weak moist run continues to have stronger power along this uh, 45 degree relative to the uh, dry simulation. And we have uh, con continue to see this uh, uh, maximum along this uh, 45 degree. So one thing is that is very interesting is that I find the maximum of uh, the power maximum along the 45 degree appear to migrate uh, up upscale. For example, uh, the um, maximum uh, uh, in the ESP40 located roughly at uh, 200 kilometer. Uh, Along this uh, circle, and it migrate up to uh, around four uh, four hundred kilometer in my full moist run. This result shows you the comparison of the vertical flux of zonal momentum, which is essentially the shaded color here. And again, this is dry simulation, weak moist simulation up to the full moist run. You can see that there is a clear dominance of negative value uh, among all the simulations. And for example, in the dry simulation, we see negative, uh, negative values in the JX region and a, and a huge enhance in the WP5 region. And this enhancement, this uh, negative value uh, in the WP5 region apparently gets saturated in the median, uh, median uh, moist run and uh, it gets complicated in the full moist run. Another interesting feature is that I find a larger area uh, of positive value uh, in the, moist, uh, full, in the moist run, for example, in this region. And this uh, positive value uh, area gets uh, expanded as I in, in include more initial relative humidity in the initial condition. And here is a, a similar plot, but I uh, focus on the vertical uh, flux of meridional momentum flux. And so it shows you another direction of the momentum flux. And there is some similarity and the difference. The similarity is mostly relies uh, in the dry simulation and the weak moist simulation, where I still find negative value in the JX region and a great response uh, in the WP5 region. However, the difference is that I find uh, both positive value and negative value are very important in the median, in the ESP60 up to uh, ESP100. Uh, the area are comparable uh, with each other uh, between uh, positive value and the negative uh, value. The positive value mostly uh, located uh, northern part uh, of the picture and the uh, negative value located uh, the southern part of the uh, pi picture. 
Uh, this is, uh, I think this is one of the, uh, my, uh, um, my uh, proudest result, but I still need to improve in, in, in the future. I show you the axis axis is the x duration uh, uh, zonal ground-based uh, phase velocity, and and y direction is the y direction of the model, model domain. I use, again, the, the two-dimensional FFT uh, and calculate, uh, 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 calculate two-dimensional FFT over time and over x at each uh, uh, y position. And I give you the dis distribution here. You can see that the negative, the minimum of the negative value is around this green line. And this green line, straight green line, represents the, the zonal uh, ground-based uh, barricade wave uh, uh, phase speed, and it's approximately uh, 14 uh, meters per second. And, and there is uh, more chances of uh, um, positive value. So in the full measurement, we clearly see uh, there's a dipole uh, structure uh, where you have both positive uh, value and the negative value in full moisture run. And the boundary between the positive value and the negative value appear to be separated by this black line. And this black line represents the zonally uh, average uh, zonal, zonal wind. So the picture, general picture is as follows. So we have the negative uh, uh, value uh, momentum flux associated with the uh, gravity wave, and also we have barricade, large scale barricade wave here. They shared uh, almost uh, a very similar uh, zonal direction, ground based phase velocity. So they move together with each other at similar uh, phase uh, velocity. So it probably has, uh, you know, uh, quasi uh, phase uh, uh, lock uh, between each other. And at faster, at faster uh, phase speed, I find there is uh, gravity wave with positive value. So this is uh, uh, one of the latest uh, results that uh, Yaga suggests me to do, where I average the uh, uh, momentum flux over uh, 3,000 kilometer and 4,000 kilometer, and try to get one dimensional distribution. And then I do the same thing uh, for the uh, y equals, between y equals uh, 4,000 kilometer up to, and uh, y equals uh, 5,000 uh, kilometer. So you can see in this di distribution, the minimum of the uh, negative uh, flux located around this uh, 15 meters per second, approximately the zonal uh, ground-based uh, barricade phase speed. And the uh, full moist run has the strongest uh, uh, negative value. And I also found that there's some uh, relatively weak uh, uh, response in the positive value in the, in the full, mo full moist run as well. However, if I compare, if I look at this, uh, look at the uh, northern part of the, of the, of, of the picture, where I see the full moist run, the signal in the, in the, uh, in the full moist run on the negative value is actually weaker than, than those signal, signal in the, my median, median moist, moist run. So it's a little bit different from uh, my result here. And also another uh, difference is, is that the positive value is, appears to be very more among all, uh, appear to be very uh, small among all uh, experiments. So the last part is a published result where I use the ray chasing model to understand the, uh, the source mechanism and the propagating effect. I use the gravity wave uh, regional or global tracer model uh, developed by Marx and Ekman and Ekman and Marx. And this uh, ray chasing uh, include a, a two parts. This part shows you the trajectory of the wave package are determined by the ground-based uh, velocity in all three directions. And this is uh, the most exciting part, which is the uh, wave number uh, uh, vector refraction equation uh, f for the time chains uh, for uh, uh, each uh, wave number. And to explain it, uh, there are actually uh, three turns in the right-hand side, where I call it a uh, wind shear turn, because you have the UVW here uh, and uh, the shear is, is, can be found in the x, y, uh, z, which is essentially the x, y, uh, z uh, gradient. And this is, these two terms are called uh, in the thermodynamic sh sh or shear uh, turn effect because we have the buoyancy frequency here, uh, n, and also we have alpha here. And alpha is associated with the uh, density scale height. And, 
And um, I tried to compare and take a, a budget analysis and compare the wind shear effect or the wind effect or thermal and the thermodynamic effect. Most of the parts uh, studied, for example, in the uh, wave capture theory, they focus on the wind effect, but uh, I want to uh, uh, study on the, on the thermodynamic effect in, in this study. So this is a budget analysis of the medium scale wave in the Jack X region in the dry simulation. And I compared these two effects. The, the red contour is the thermodynamic effect uh, uh, during the backward tracing, uh, ray tracing from this uh, level and trace back to uh, uh, to the surface level, and the the green contour is the thermodynamic uh, shear turns, and the summary is the uh, black line here. You can see that for the most part of the background uh, backward ray tracing, the wind turn really dominate. For example, within this region and within this region, the green line is really almost very close uh, to, the, uh, to the black line. However, the thermodynamic effect can be potentially enhanced or even largely cancel the effect of the wind turn around the tropopause and surface frontal system in which there is s a dramatic change in the static stability. For example, within this region, the, the uh, behavior of the uh, thermodynamic turn, which is the red line here, are completely different, uh, 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 even against the, uh, the wind, uh, wind effects. So generally, uh, generally speaking, I found that for an upward propagating wave package that's crossing the travel poles, the value of the thermodynamic turn are always negative. So it, showed it, it is indicated that the thermodynamic effect always tends to shorten uh, the vertical wavelength for an upward propagating uh, wave across the tropopause. Here, I try to do the forward uh, rate, uh, rate analysis. I put a four, five wave package here at roughly the uh, 10 kilometer in the JAX region. And, and this is forward uh, ray tracing an an analysis. So you can see that the ray is propagating downstream. And the circle represents the uh, position at each uh, kilometer, each one kilometer. And, uh, and the triangle here represents the position at each one hour. And you can see that this is the full uh, uh, physical uh, uh, models. Uh, where I have both uh, thermodynamic turn and wind turns. And this is the modified uh, code where I only have the wind, uh, wind shear turns and I exclude all the therm thermodynamic uh, shear turns. You can see that there's almost no sensitivity to the, uh, to the modif modification for the northern part of the ray and the median, uh, this, uh, the ray, the blue, the blue uh, uh, color. However, for the southern part, uh, I find that there's a uh, there's a noticeable southern propagation in the southern part of, uh, of the forward ray tracing uh, compared to the full, full physics. So, so, there, uh, the, so you can see that thermodynamic can, uh, can be very important for some of the wave package. You may still argue that uh, it's very weak response, but when I look at the uh, characteristic uh, change, uh, it, it may be more dramatic. For example, again, there's almost no change in the northern part and the median uh, me, uh, and the center, center part of the ray. But for the, for the red color, the southern ray, here in the full phase, you have the tendency of decreasing uh, wave, uh, horizontal wavelength as it propagates upward. However, this tendency is completely gone uh, if we exclude all the uh, thermodynamic turn. So the tendency is really determined or controlled by the, by the thermodynamic turn for the southern part uh, of the ray. So, I conclude here that there may be sensitivity to the inclusion and exclusion to the thermodynamic effect for certain Barakuni jet axis region uh, wave packets in their ray tracing trajectory, also in their uh, propagation wave char characteristic. So this paper is published uh, in, in JAMS uh, uh, publication. And also in this paper, we also uh, uh, trace the graph to, uh, using the backward ray tracing to understand the source mechanism and find that there are actually uh, two separate wave, wave packets uh, located in different, uh, different position of the Barakini uh, wave. Here, you can find that the wave package is in the jet X region. And and this wave package is in the jet entrance region. However, if we integrate backward in, in time, both of them can be traced back to the jet uh, axis region. So both of them are 
may be generated by the upper level jet. However, because they are generated by different time step and, and due to the uh, strength uh, of the uh, background flow and the different uh, propagating uh, effect during their life cycle, their propagation uh, uh, and the fate of, and the life cycle are very uh, different from each other. So. Yeah. The background includes uh, the uh, the wind and the uh, thermodynamic uh, the, the wind turn and the thermodynamic return. So you when I s no, how do you define the background profile? Oh, the background profile is uh, I get the background profile from my Wolf simulation. So initial conditions or time average? Both initial com both in the the uh, background uh, con uh, background is changed every uh, six hour is uh, if I remember correctly. So it's a it's a four dimensional back back. back Background uh, and change. Uh, I, I reduce it to uh, every three hours. There's almost no sensitivity uh, to, to that. And I, I also think it's a very less sensitivity to the vertical re resolution uh, as well. So the background information is the U, V, W, and N, and alpha. Comes from the mesoscale scale model. Mm. So this is five day integration? It's five day integration? Uh, uh, I give the I give uh, the initial condition of the of the initial um, uh, KLM. This is uh, this is given. Can How long? What's the period of integration? The integration. Uh, it will be terminated automatically. It will be several possibility of the scenario of the termination. For example, when the uh, vertical velocity is very small, is smaller than maybe. Um, I'm, just, I'm just talking about. A typical, typical integration life cycle is about several, uh, one, one day or one, one day, probably less than, than, well, than one, one day. And and also it depends. Well, yeah. Yeah, and also it depends on which weight package is, uh, we are looking at. For the sixth weight, weight package, yeah, it's yeah. yeah. It's, it's just several hours, yeah. So this part is the, my uh, conclusion. The idealized simulation uh, in weak moisture run the dry dynamic uh, dominates, and for the gravity downstream of the convection wave amplitude are in noticeably enhanced. In the full moisture run, convective mode uh, fully coupled with other gravity mode uh, and background wind as by uh, increase over time. In the spectral uh, characteristic estimation, the vertical transport of the zonal momentum flux is dominated by the negative value in all experiments. And interestingly, we find that there's a larger area of positive value in the full moisture run. And it is shown that the zonal phase velocity of the negative uh, flux minimum appear to be around the uh, zonal uh, ground-based balcony wave phase speed 14 meters per second. In contrast, there is a, a distribution that looks like a dipole structure in the full moist run. And in the ray tracing analysis, we show that the thermodynamic effect can counteract and enhance or even take over the effect of the, uh, of the background wind uh, for those wave packs that, that is crossing the trouble pass uh, or frontal uh, system region. Thank you very much. This is my talk. Thank you. So we do have time for questions. Um, I'm interested actually in observing gravity waves with airborne sensors, and can you give me an idea what the magnitude of the vertical velocity is of these different wave packets you identified in these different environments? Uh -huh. So it is centimeters per second, it is meter per second, so what's the magnitude, roughly speaking? Do we know this? Probably it's, uh, s on the order of centim centimeter per second. Only a few or 10 or 50? It, 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 in my dry simulation, I remember it's uh, around uh, a few uh, centimeters per, per, per second, so but it can be enhanced. Observe, right? It can be enhanced by the by the by the moisture at least double or even even ten times ten times uh, 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 greater uh, in the full moisture run compared to the dry simulation. So so convection can be can be a very important. It's different, but waves. Uh, I think uh, Andreas, uh, you, you meant the, around the, the trouble, trouble yeah. sphere. Uh, lower stratosphere, uh, yeah, 12 kilometer um, is uh, is w w is the where where I focus. Uh, 12 kilometer is also the source level uh, 
roughly the source uh, level in the general circulation where I launched the you know, source function from roughly you know, right. 12 kilometers. So, so all your simulation is kind of below 15 or 20 kilometer in altitudes, sure. right? Sure. So if the wave, say, as you said, a few centimeters per second uh -huh. to maybe tens of centimeters per second, when the wave goes up to you know, mesosphere, uh, somosphere, it, it can be the, the amplitude can be much bigger, right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. The amplitude can be much bigger associated with the decreasing decreasing density. Yeah. Yeah. But we didn't go up. This place didn't go up. Um, I think the track. Maybe everybody can speak up. Yeah. Basically, the question following your different uh, relative humidity runs and showing. Uh, two-dimensional FFT transform. Mm -hmm. And it shows that at higher humidity, you don't have a actually prevailing direction for propagation of gravity waves. So it's approximately isotropic, correct? Uh, this graph, which is you put uh, that diagram. You mean the red circles? The, the red circles here? No, 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 just uh, FFT. FFT, okay. FFT. Here? No, no, uh, one more. One more. Back, back. Oh, this yeah, this okay. one, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So uh, basically, <laughs> this diagram, according to my eyes, so it actually shows not only wavelengths, but it shows turbulence, I would say. Yes. So yes. how you separate, how you would like to separate, and do you have some suggestions if you have, if, if this regime quite realistic for bra clinic like and very frequent, how we can parameterize with uh, cases in the global uh, model, if we would like, for instance, to pick up some. So we need all propagation of waves in all direction or what? Mm -hmm. what what's your recommendation or recipes for this, mm. for parameterization in global models? So if 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 this if this case uh, the bottom row case is realistic, uh, so um, it's very first of all it's a very good question and this is something that I want to uh, work on uh, uh, in in the future. So my current preliminary uh, results suggest that uh, you are definitely right, right. In the short scale range between uh, uh, 50 kilometer and uh, 200 ki kilometer uh, that I show in this figure, especially in the full moist run convection and gravity wave, uh, or turbulence and gravity wave can be hard, hard to separate from separate from each other and yeah and and we here just based on the result we show uh, that uh, uh, the the homogene relative homogeneous distribution in this uh, short, uh, short scale uh, energy it can be you know explained by turbulence as well but it can be also uh, mm, Mm, caused by the short scale gravity wave at the same time, so I cannot uh, completely answer answer that. But but uh, uh, this uh, uh, the medium scale uh, uh, signal is a little bit different compared to the uh, sh short scale signal. The the uh, in uh, the especially in its inhomogeneous uh, distribution, I mentioned that there's uh, enhancement in the 45 degree, and this degree can be selected by the background wind or maybe selected by the orientation of the latent heating release. So there's a you know a relationship between the meteorology con con condition and this or or orientation. Uh, Associated with this, with uh, with the median median scale uh, range, so um, th that's probably uh, something that uh, we can think about in terms of uh, uh, parameterization. Yeah. So, wh what are the convective updrafts in in your moist simulations look like? I mean, are they several grid points wide? How deep are they? Oh, the convective uh, is relatively like a, a st stratiform. A stratiform uh, uh, cloud where you have both uh, positive value uh, in the upper level and negative value in the uh, lower lower level. Uh, especially in the weak moist run, there's almost no almost no cape and no 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 sink, and but we still see the you know release of the latent heating and uh, and the very strong uh, enhancement in the WP5 region. In the full moist run, the cape is around. Uh, 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 maximum case, uh, I remember, is about 600 uh, uh, joules per uh, kil kil kilogram. So it's me like a median, median uh, uh, strength of the um, 
uh, of a, a stone is not a, you know strongest stone you can see in the in the in the in the real world. But do, do you I mean do you see do you see cells? Do you see convective? I, mean, I, I see yeah I see I see uh, sh uh, the uh, updraft short scale updraft very sh uh, short scale roughly um, say 50 kilometer you know range of the con convection uh, cell definitely yeah sure in in especially in full moist run probably also in weak, weak moist run if I remember correctly yeah. Let's have time for one more. Mine's just a quick clarification. Mm. Okay, so we won't count. Just uh, maybe you said it, but is, are they uh, 0, 0, 20, 40? Is that relative humidity? What uh, are the? Uh, uh, yes, yes. The the number represents uh, how many percentage how many percentage uh, that I take uh, from a relative uh, relative uh, reference relative hum humidity. For example, yes, P20. I take 20 percent of 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 uh, reference relative humidity, uh, which is essentially is the is the shaded color here? Is so I take twenty percent of this shaded color here. I reduce uh, to the twenty percent. So you identified the waves have um, vertical scale of about two kilometer. Is this typically observed the scale? You mean vertical wavelength? A, a vertical vertical two, wavelength. Two kilometer. Uh huh. So is this typically observed in actual observations? Mm, I think it's a typical, relative, typical uh, value, but um, because I'm not working on the um, observational study. Yeah, yeah, in, you can see that in this paper, with the Linnean Cork 1987 paper, it's, uh, it's an uh, observational, based on a 13 observational uh, case study. And it shows that the, the range is within uh, one kilometer and four kilometers. So I'm very confident, so thank you. Okay, well, let's thank Shu Hung, and also let's congratulate Dr. Wei on his recent thank PhD. You. Thank you very much.